Hey, Bipsy Squad, welcome back to another episode of Biblically Serious. We are in our Biblical Theology series. This is part three, and today we are going to be covering four passages that support biblical theology. So the four passages that we're going to cover today are going to show us not only where the interpretive method of biblical theology is found in scripture, but also how it is modeled. First up is Luke 24 verses 25 to 27 that supports that all scriptures point to Christ. In Luke, we see how the Old Testament prophecies speak to the coming of Christ and the story of Christ in the New Testament. Verse 25 says, And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In this passage, we see that Jesus is disciplining, correcting the disciples for failing to see how in the Old Testament it supports that um, the Messiah and the Savior needed to suffer in the New Testament in order to bring salvation. They also just failed to see the unity and the centrality of the scriptures. Jesus is so upset that they do not get this, that he calls them foolish and slow of heart to believe. And the disciples should have known because the Old Testament speaks about how it is necessary for the Messiah to suffer for our sins before he is exalted through resurrection and ascension. Next up is 2 Peter 1 verses 20 to 21 that speaks to Christ being the author of all scripture. We spoke previously about how biblical theology recognizes that there is one author that inspired the 30 to 40 authors of the Bible and 2 Peter affirms that God inspired scripture. It says, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. What this verse is saying is that the apostles and the prophets, they weren't using their own words and they didn't come up with these stories and ideas on their own. Instead, they were just interpreting uh, what they had received from God and documenting it. The Holy Spirit was working also to empower them and planting in their hearts so that they could believe and also um, giving them the vision to be able to write down what God was trying to communicate. So the next passages are Genesis 3 paired with John 12. The reason why I took one Old Testament passage and paired it with a New Testament passage is because I want us to see how God's redemptive um, plan was progressively revealed over time. Unlike systematic theology, which takes one topic and tries to see everything that the Bible has to say about that topic, in biblical theology, we trace the progressive revelation of God's saving plan. And we're going to see that when we look at Genesis and then John. In Genesis 3.15, God promised that the offspring of the woman would one day crush the head of the serpent. It's not obvious and it's not revealed immediately who this um, offspring is. But as we progressively, you know, trace this story throughout the Bible, we later see in John 3 that this offspring is from the descendant of Abraham and is Jesus the Messiah. So it's not until the New Testament do we see the fulfillment and really understand what that prophecy in Genesis 3 is about. John helps us to understand that the crushing of the serpent's head is really Jesus's triumph over Satan and sin. And when it says that Satan will bruise the heel, that speaks to Jesus's suffering on the cross. But ultimately, Jesus shows complete dominance. Jesus tells us now is the time for judgment on the world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from heaven, will draw all people to myself, which shows how he had ultimate dominance in the end and was able to crush the head of the serpent. And the final passage I want to bring to your attention is Acts 7. So in our previous video, when we talked about the three horizons of God's self-revelation, we talked about the different steps in order to broaden our horizons. 
and help us to see the story of the Bible. And one example of the second horizon that we talked about, which was the covenantal horizon, which helps us to identify the epics within the story of the Bible, is actually modeled in Acts 7. So in Stephen's speech in Acts 7, I won't read it all because it is very long, but you see how he skillfully traces the history of the Old Testament based off major events and major historical figures that ultimately um, point to and climax at Jesus Christ. And some figures that he brings up is Abraham, Moses, and Joseph. Those are four passages that help us see in the Bible the origins, the thoughts around where biblical theology came as far as an interpretive method, and also helps us to see how it's modeled within the scriptures. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.